Well, here we are, folks, with the Rode Video Micro camera mic. I purchased this after seeing a lot of online reviews, especially here on YouTube, comparing this low-end, or I say that with quotes, low-end, uh, even though it's really not, compared to their Pro model. Uh, the Pro version of this mic costs several hundred dollars. It's a lot larger. And to my ears, listening to various samples compared with the Micro to the Pro, uh, I found them very comparable. So what I'm going to show you is the mic. I'm not a big fan of unboxing videos, uh, so I'll just skip to uh, the actual contents. Well, the contents are actually a little bit more beautiful than I thought, so here I'm letting you see how it's uh, packed, which is not too... Not too bad, actually, uh, the way everything is placed inside. Um, well, we'll skip to all of the individual components. And here they are. We've got the suspended um, shock mount here for the mic itself with the cable that goes between the mic and the camera. And then you've got what they call the dead cat, uh, the furry boy, the... Uh, squirrel's tail, uh, whatever, a uh, little soft thing to make sure that you don't get a lot of wind noise when outside. And by the way, I'm actually shooting this video, recording the audio on a GH5 in HLG mode, okay? And I'm recording the audio on my Sony PCM D100 uncompressed uh, linear 24-bit 48 kilohertz mode right now. The Sony is a stereo mic. Uh, this Rode is a mono mic. And you might say, well, why, why did I get a mono mic? Uh, wouldn't it be better sound if I got one that was stereo? And the answer is, when you're outdoors, you, at least for where I live here in Japan, and if you didn't detect already the noise outside, right, it's a little bit noisy. It wouldn't be Japan without noise. So that's that's Japan for you. Anyway, we've got a fair amount of wind in Japan. It's an island nation, and pretty much everywhere you go, you're going to have some kind of wind. So I'm definitely going to put this to good use. And when you're outside, you don't really notice that it's a mono mic just because you're, you're trying to cut down on the noise. And, and when you have a stereo mic and you think you want to pick up more ambient sound, you're actually picking up more noise. So uh, I don't see it as a loss. Uh, would my... Sony PCMD100 sound better? Sure, but I'm, it's heavy, it's bigger. I'm not gonna wanna put it on the top of my camera, but this is, you can see how, how uh, small it is. This fits right in my hand, and it's going to be very lightweight when put on the camera. By the way, before I go uh, further, I purchased this uh, through B&H Photo. I live in Japan. I didn't know they were going to do it, but they shipped it from Germany for some reason. I guess they have a fulfillment center, a distribution center of some sort there, um, as opposed to shipping it out from the U.S. So I'll give you samples of this compared with my Sony PCM D100 compared to the built-in mics of my camera. But before I throw it on the camera, just to show you a little bit closer image with the mic mounted on the suspended element here. Um, the mic can move around uh, a fair amount, although when you put the dead cat on, that's going to restrict the movement a little bit, but this shock mount should help um, to suppress a lot of the bumps and jolts that you're going to inflict on your camera when you're pushing buttons because this will be mounted uh, on the camera. At least in my case, that's what I intend to do really is a bit strange, um, the balancing on this shock mount, because the instructions say insert microphone body into the captive mount, which is th that this thing here, um, on the uh, Rycote Lyre shock mount. Okay, so yeah, I've, I've mounted it like that, and um, it says, you know, follow the diagram, but on the diagram, it actually shows the road logo uh, to be facing towards you and the mic is going to be facing away from you right and then this connector here is going to be facing towards you 
Well, that's the way I had it when it was drooping down. And so now what I did is I flipped it around. I flipped it completely around so that the road uh, logo is facing to the front away from me. And now it seems more balanced. So if I flip the mic around the other way in accordance with this picture, then the mic droops down. Here I have it with the road logo facing towards me in the back, just like uh, the manual is saying, but when I do that, uh, even with the weightiness of this connector in the back, the mic droops down. It it's, it's goes down. But if I disregard the manual and flip it around, it doesn't say anything about the road logo, so... But so that the logo back here, it says 19 to 22 millimeters, and the road logo um, is up here, then it seems more more balanced, more straight. So I guess you shouldn't listen to the manual here. Just do whatever makes it straight. I'm going to give you some audio samples. Put some headphones on, good quality ones, in a quiet room and listen for yourself. You're still listening to my Sony PCM-D100. Uh, the dual mics are the built-in mics of that and they are about a foot and a half from my mouth. Uh, the mics, you can adjust them in an XY configuration or you can uh, turn them both out opposite away from each other for more uh, stereo dynamic range. Uh, but I have them straight, so they're just firing straight ahead. Both of them firing or aimed directly at my mouth and my mouth is pointed uh, towards the PCMD100 and again it's a foot and a half away from my mouth and the gain knob on the right side is set at 5.5 5.5 I do have the limiter enabled and so now I'm going to switch to uh, the internal mics of my GH5 I haven't moved my body position I am uh, directly behind the camera and talking about um, a little bit less than a foot and a half away from the camera and the mics inside my GH5 are stereo so you should hear stereo on my PCMD100 and on in the GH5 but um, there will be more noise through the GH5 mics just because on-camera mics aren't that great they're also very omnidirectional okay so they're not fired or they're not pointed uh, directly at my mouth. Now I'm going to stand here. I'm now standing to the side uh, of my camera and now I'm standing in front of my camera and the distance between my mics, the mics and my mouth is remaining the same. I'm just walking around now, uh, walking around my camera. Now I'm on the left side uh, of the camera. So that is the on-camera mic. And what I will do now is plug in my Rode mic and the uh, gain setting on the GH5 is set to minus six. The gain is minus six and uh, that way I won't be clipping. Uh, the limiter on my GH5 is off. Um, so probably some of the audio might have clipped a little bit. It's it's pretty hot if I look at the uh, the level meters. Anyway, I will plug in the video micro into the GH5's mic input right now. Okay, now I have the uh, video micro plugged in. By the way, I, I have to stop the GH5 if I just plug it in while I'm recording, then it won't switch over from the onboard mics. And I know that because there's a mic icon just above the level meters on my LCD that shows me that. And so right now I'm seeing the mic and uh, you can probably hear a difference. Uh, by the way, I'm standing behind the video micro, behind the camera. Again, same distance, just over a foot from my mouth. Now I'm standing uh, just to the to the right uh, of the camera, speaking directly into the side of the video micro. And now I am talking 
uh, directly into the video micro about a foot away that's where my mouth is about a foot away from the mic if I get up and move around here I'm behind the mic now I'm on the left side uh, of the mic left side of the mic so you can kind of hear hey I'm walking behind the mic and now I'm on the right side of the mic and now I am in front of the mic so you can kind of hear the the noise comparison to the onboard mics and uh, the Sony PCM D100. So I'm still recording with the video micro on my camera here. Just wanted to show you uh, the dead cat. If I stick my finger in, it does not drop off. So um, the video micro mic is uh, roughly the size of my finger, at least the front part. The back part is thicker, but my index finger is fairly close to it, and you can see that it uh, sticks right in there. My thumb, I can press it in, but it's a bit tight. So this, if I can get it off now, there it is. Um, this has a, a rubber ring uh, around this side here. And uh, it, of course, is very furry. I, I didn't see a lot of these hairs uh, inside the packaging, which I think is a good sign. It means it's not going to shed uh, too much at all and if I feel around on the inside with my finger it feels like there's some kind of a a soft mesh uh, inside and if I press on it it's fairly thick so I'm guessing that this hair underneath it is one of those um, you know the black uh, foamy cushiony type of windscreens that you see on a lot of mics that's what I'm guessing is actually built in here uh, under this hair. I'm not going to tear it apart to, to determine that, but uh, overall it seems uh, fairly well made and um, even has a logo badge on the side for those of you who care about that. I'm still recording audio with the Rode Video Micro and I am looking straight into my GH5's lens right now and uh, I have the mic on top of the camera so I'm speaking directly into the mic and the distance between me and the mic I would say is two feet so one foot 30 centimeters so 60 centimeters approximately maybe maybe yeah about about that and I have the dead cat on I don't really think it affects the sound too much but I and again we're indoors so you know you're not going to be putting the dead cat on indoors Yes, later on in this video, I will do an outdoor test so you can actually hear it. I still have it on minus six, uh, the setting on my GH5, and the limiter is off. Okay, so the limiter is not on at all. And uh, I found that when I put the dead cat on, I took a picture here with my uh, Lumix GX7 camera. You can see that the dead cat is is adding some weight to it so it makes it a little bit front heavy and it pulls it down so the mic actually won't stick out straight straight ahead when the dead cat is on well here we are outside and it's a fairly windy day I've got the GH5 set up with a video micro on top it's got the dead cat on um, I set the levels to zero uh, previously in the house I had it set to minus six I've got it set on zero since I'm out with my son and he's got his RC car uh, I don't have the low cut turned on, uh, just the dead cat on. So what you're hearing now, you'll probably hear some wind noise. Uh, I'll spin the camera around, it's at arm's length here. Now I'm at uh, talking into the left side of it. Now I'm talking in the back. It's a cardioid mic, so my voice should be attenuated a bit. Now I'm talking on the, uh, I spin the camera around on the right side. And now it's again back, uh, back to me. Okay, so this is with uh, the low cut filter set to low. There's low, standard, and high. So it's set to low right now. And again, uh, the breeze is, is pretty good. So now I changed it to uh, be standard. The low cut is set to standard. And uh, we'll change directions here so that the wind will hit 
that's the wind is coming this direction so it's, it should be hitting the um, the mic pretty good yeah it's picking up here so this is the low cat set to high so most of the low frequency should be cut out and I guess if there's any wind noise getting through the dead cat I mean the mic is really flopping around the wind is hitting it pretty good here I changed it to standard again the low cut uh, to standard Now I'm facing away from the wind, and uh, this is uh, facing directly into the wind. So the dead cat is really flopping around at this point. This is facing uh, perpendicular into the wind. I'm just showing you the trees here. You can see how windy it is. Wind is blowing pretty good. And I've got the uh, low cut set to high. So I'm behind the camera. This is uh, the wind at my back to the back of the video micro. And I'm talking uh, just less than a foot away from the back of it. And I've got the low cut set to high. And the dead cat is flopping around pretty good because of the strong wind. So right now the wind is coming this direction. And it's coming and hitting the uh, microphone direct on. Alright, now I've got the video micro disconnected you're hearing the internal GH5 mics. Uh, remember the level is still set to zero. I do not have the low cut on at all. It's completely shut off. So you're probably hearing a lot of wind distortion now. So now I'll turn the uh, I'll turn the low cut all the way up to high. I've got the low cut set to high right now. And the wind is again to my back flowing towards the GH5. Uh, the video micro is still mounted in the hot shoe atop the camera but it's not, even the dead cat, it's not really uh, covering up the mic, so it, it's, this is pretty much what you're going to hear with the internal mics, um, with the low cut set to high, max. Okay, so now I have the, uh, the video micro connected again, and the limiter is actually turned off. It's been turned off this whole time. Uh, the low cut is set to standard right now, so the wind is coming in from behind the video micro. Probably should have left the limiter on since I'm talking at a pretty good volume. So there might have been some distortion. Uh, maybe even setting it lower than zero would have been best. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So this is with the limiter turned on. I've set the gain down to minus three. The wind is coming at me so it's coming from behind uh, the camera. And if I look at my my level meter I can see that, you know, I'm not talking too, too loud. I'm talking at a normal volume, but I'm still getting close to hitting zero dB. So probably there was a lot of clipping before uh, since I didn't have the limiter on and I had it set at zero. So I'll spin it around here. I'm talking uh, behind, behind the camera and the video micro is facing uh, into the wind. I dropped the gain down further to minus six. Minus six. And this is with the wind coming towards me and directly behind the video micro. And again, the dead cat's still on. And I have the uh, low cut set to standard. If I look at the level meter, it doesn't look like I'm maxing it out now at minus six. So it seems like minus six is probably the best setting, at least at this range, since I'm talking pretty close uh, into the mic. 
And again, I have the limiter uh, still turned on. So now I'll switch to the uh, internal GH5 mics so you can hear those again. And now you're listening to the GH5 stereo mics without any dead cat, but I've got the standard uh, low cut, low cut set to standard. So you can hear the hear that sounds. Uh, it looks like I can see it level meters are almost maxing out, so there's probably a lot of noise on those. So I'll switch back to the video micro now. So I have the uh, video micro plugged back in. It's still at minus six. I changed the uh, limiter to high, or not the limiter, but the um, uh, the low cut. So the low cut is set to high. The wind is still smacking me in the face, so it's going uh, behind the camera. And if you can see by my hair, I don't know, it's uh, the wind is blowing pretty good. It's blowing pretty good today. So this should give you some idea of how the video micro, I mean the video micro is bobbing up and down. It's being jostled all over the place and I've got my my strap here flopping around too. I thought I'd give you some closing thoughts. Am I happy with the purchase of the Video Micro? Yes. And in my case, I purchased this mic uh, not so that I, I could get better sound indoors, but rather to use it exclusively outdoors. And the reason is because, as you heard in the audio samples, when you use the GH5's internal mics, the there's no way to put a dead cat on there uh, yes i've heard the stories and seen articles of people who glue some fur on there but i don't want to gunky up my camera by doing that and uh, the only reason you'd want the fur on there is to uh, is if you wanted to go outside anyway and uh, i don't want to do that so getting an external microphone is really the only option here and uh, right now I still have the video micro on top of the camera. The dead cat is on there. It really doesn't make any difference if the dead cat is on or off. Uh, set to minus three in the GH5, the uh, gain level. I have the limiter turned on now. And I'm about a foot and a half, or no, not a foot and a half, but I'm about a meter away from the camera, which for you folks in the US is about a yard away and my 12 to 100 millimeter lens is set on the 25 millimeter so you're getting in full frame terms about a 50 millimeter look here at me uh, again this is Japan uh, so you're gonna hear a lot of road noise outside the house which uh, I'm sorry about that but it really can't be helped I don't have a soundproof room in here but yes I'm pleased with the purchase and again I had an option to purchase the video mic pro which is the larger and supposedly better uh, version, but uh, it's also bigger. And I didn't want big because uh, with the VideoMic Pro, it's pretty big even with the normal soft cushiony windscreen on it. But that would be inadequate. You would really need to have a dead cat on it. And by the time you put a dead cat on the VideoMic Pro, it's just, in my opinion, just too, too large. Because even with this uh, video micro with the dead cat on it, it's it gets uh, pretty substantial in size. You saw the photos that I I prepared there, and um, also the main reason though is because here on YouTube I did a lot of research and I saw other videos and I saw people who actually had a video mic pro and compared it with the video micro, and many of them were saying, well, you know, I actually like the video micro better or it's comparable, or I don't see a difference. 
Um, and I think perhaps that's because they were using it in situations that were outside the home. And um, you are going to have other ambient noises anyway. And the, the, the benefit of the Video Mic Pro, which you're paying a lot of money for that, is uh, better low-end uh, sounds. Uh, but when you go outside, you're probably going to be putting on a low-cut filter to cut out the low sounds anyway, so you defeat the purpose. You might as well get the lower-cost, more economical video micro. At least that was my purchasing reasoning why I bought this one. And uh, as I said, I'm I don't have no I don't have I have no regrets for having purchased the video micro. I do have regrets in my testing. Uh, I just wanted to to see how it would be if I set the video levels to zero. And as you heard, that was too hot. Uh, you need to have the setting to be at least minus three, but with strong wind, you definitely want to have it set on minus six. You can even go lower. And this is a GH5, so if you don't have a Panasonic GH5, your settings are obviously going to be different, and I can't give you specific guidance on that. Um, but I can say that uh, the preamps and the GH5 are pretty good. Compared to Canon, they're fabulous. <laughs> okay, compared to some other cameras, the GH5 is, is quite an excellent camera when, when it comes to plugging in external microphones. So you really don't need a microphone that has a built-in battery and gain. And even if, even if I bought the Video Mic Pro, which lets you boost the gain, I think it's like to plus 20, um, it's actually too hot for the GH5, even if you turn the GH5 levels down to minus 12. It's unusable if you uh, bo use the, gain, the maximum gain boost on the Video Mic Pro. With a Video Micro, you don't have a gain boost because it doesn't have a battery, and that, in my opinion, is also another benefit to it as well. Um, but you really don't need it on the GH5. You don't need a... a, a amplifier built into the mic when used with the GH5, in my opinion. Just because the mic preamps of the GH5 are so good, and most of the time, uh, you're going to need to turn it down anyway. For example, right now, it's set at minus three. And uh, I, if I look at, uh, I have the flip out screen on my GH5 and I look at it, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I'm not, I'm not in danger of clipping. I also have the limiter turned on and the low cut is turned off right now. So what you're listening to right now, low cut is off completely, minus three uh, gain and the low, and uh, the dead cat is on there. Uh, but again, I, for indoor use, I would probably use my PCM-D100 Sony just because it's all around, uh, I mean, my goodness, the thing is $800, right? So it's a bit more professional and I get excellent quality out of that. The thing is though, to use the PCM-D100 with the GH5, unless I get some type of attenuator cable to drop down the line out, there's no way to use it with the GH5 plugging it into the microphone input. I've tried it, even at minus 12, it's too hot. Okay, and you cannot adjust the PCM-D100 to just um, use a regular cable and go in that way. So what's the benefit of of using an external mic microphone versus a audio recorder like the PCM-D100? And the answer is you can sync. It's, it, well, you, you don't have to sync. It's already synced up for you. Like right now, the audio, I've got the video micro on there. It's taking the audio out from the video micro and connecting it into the microphone input and so the the audio that the GH5 is recording the only audio that it's recording is from the video micro there's no sync up that I have to do in post when I edit in Final Cut Pro 10 nothing I have to do it's just there but when I use my PCM-D100 then well it's um, recording in its own internal memory the GH5 is not recording that yes the GH5 in that case would use its own internal mics and that's what I use to sync it up so in post, I would put the clip in there. It has the GH5's internal audio, and then I will import my PCM-D100's audio, and I can line it up with the GH5's audio pretty easily. And then I just uh, delete or zero out the GH5's audio, 
and use the PCMD100 instead. But with the Video Micro, you don't have to do that step because it's plugged into the microphone input port and uh, you just shoot. And then in post, you just uh, do whatever you normally do and you don't have to worry about syncing up audio. But as I said before, my purpose in purchasing this was to reduce wind noise. And with the GH5 internal mics, without a dead cat, they sound pretty bad. You heard that, just unusable almost, <laughs> if you have fairly strong wind. And with the dead cat on this, combined with a low cut and a limiter, well, on a strong windy day, it, it does fairly decently. I mean, you're not going to be able to go out in a typhoon, folks, and expect to get great audio, no matter what you have. Dead cat, limiters, and reduced gain, and all of that. And uh, here in Japan, like I said, it, it gets pretty windy. You saw some of the clips. My hair was blowing pretty good, and you didn't see the video micro. I didn't have a second camera to show you, but the video micro was just bobbing up and down and going all over the place because the wind was blasting it. And yet you heard the, the clips, and some of them uh, came out pretty decently. And that's why I'm pleased with it. Uh, again, the video micro is a mono mic, but I think that's a good thing. It uh, reduces unnecessary ambience. And uh, I didn't go out, and yes, this, this review is not a comprehensive review. I could have gone out and, and captured music and other things, but I wanted to avoid a copyright strike on my YouTube account. You know how YouTube is pretty feisty about anything pertaining to music, so um, on purpose I didn't do that. Uh, and you could hear the RC car that I recorded, and you could, you could see it, was, it got a pretty far distance away, but it's still the video micro picked it up quite nicely and uh, that's why I'm satisfied with the performance overall so I would say that it's lightweight doesn't need a battery uh, the cable is long enough uh, the red cable kind of looks pretty nifty to me the dead cat is well made um, overall I really don't see any any negatives to it other than that it I told you at the beginning of the video it kind of drops down a little bit depending on how you mount it in that right coat shock mount and then when you put the dead cat on it, it it comes down a little bit as well but it didn't matter in the testing you know because it's not it's it's still the the you saw the graph I mean the cardioid mic graph it it shoots out and um, it, it picks up quite a lot anyway so if it's down a little bit um, straight out it doesn't matter a whole lot but uh, it's obviously best if it, the straighter you can make it, uh, the better it is. I don't know if mine's necessarily defective. I, I was trying to look for things like that in other YouTube videos to see if I saw it drop down when they had the dead cat on, and sometimes it did and sometimes it didn't. So uh, I'm not sure what to say about that. But I don't see that as a big problem, and you heard the audio clips for yourself, so you can see. It's... um. Not really a big issue. That would be the only small thing that I did find. Uh, and again, you're going to find the. Uh, I bought this from B and H uh, Photo, and the price was uh, quite good. So you're going to get it in the $60 range, whereas the Video Mic Pro is going to be more like $200 or or a bit more. And uh, I'm glad I bought this particular mic. So I hope this video helps you and seeing and hearing what I saw and heard and can help you in your own purchasing decision. Thank you for watching.